President Biden will go to Geneva to meet with President Putin. He will do so, of course, after having had nearly a week of intensive consultations with allies and democratic partners from both Europe and the Indo-Pacific. So he will go into this meeting with the wind at his back. Now, we have made clear repeatedly, and I will uh, reinforce again today, that we do not regard a meeting with the Russian president as a reward. We regard it as a vital part of defending America's interests and America's values. Joe Biden is not meeting with Vladimir Putin despite our country's differences. He's meeting with him because of our country's differences. There is simply a lot we have to work through. We believe that President Biden is the most effective direct communicator of American values and priorities, and we believe that hearing directly from President Putin is the most effective way to understand what Russia intends and plans. There is never any substitute for leader-to-leader -leader engagement, particularly for complex relationships. But with Putin, this is exponentially the case. He has a highly personalized style of decision-making, and so it is important for President Biden to be able to sit down with him face-to-face -to, -face to be clear about where we are, to understand where he is, to try to manage our differences, and to identify those areas where we can work in America's interests to make progress. When President Biden returns to Washington next week, we believe that we will be in a materially stronger position to manage the major threats and challenges this country faces. COVID, climate, China, cyber, Russia, and shaping the rules of trade and technology for the future. So with that, I'd be happy to take any questions that you have. Yeah. Thanks, Jake. Is this the right time to be having a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Vladimir Putin so early in President Biden's presidency before he's met one-on-one -on -one with so many other world leaders and at a time when there isn't a specific deliverable that the White House is looking to achieve from the one-on-one -on -one meeting? So first, we don't think in terms of U.S.-Russia summits uh, as being about deliverables. Because if you're going to wait for really significant deliverables, you could be waiting a long time, conceivably. So what we need to think about this summit is doing is fundamentally giving us an opportunity to communicate from our president to their president what American intentions and capabilities are and to hear the same from their side. That has value in and of itself. Secondly, in terms of the timing, it is hard from our perspective to find a better context for a meeting with the Russian president. Then after time spent with the world's leading market economies, the G7, plus India, South Korea, Australia, and South Africa, after a meeting with all of his fellow leaders at NATO, after a meeting with the presidents of the European Union, and then and only then going into this session to be able to talk through the complex set of issues in the U.S.-Russia relationship. That, from our perspective, is the right context within which to engage Russia. And as far as whether it comes too early in his presidency, if you think about what we've dealt with from the outset on Russia, it's been a busy time. We've extended the New START agreement. We've imposed costs for election interference and for solar winds. We've dealt with a Russian buildup uh, on the Ukraine border. And of course, we are contending with a range of issues in the cyber and ransomware domain. So we feel that it is an effective and appropriate context and time period for us to have this summit.